two. Well, Hawaii has been known for its epic North Shore surf, but this past weekend into the beginning of the work week, we had an historic swell that created surf up to 26 feet in some areas. Joining us this morning is Genki Kino. He's a meteorologist that works at the National Weather Service office over at the UH Manoa campus. Good morning, Genki. Thanks for coming in this morning to answer some of the questions uh, that we have, right? Because a lot of people are having questions. They just kind of want to know why this thing uh, was different than, than all the other swells. So uh, we'll start off with that. Why was this an historic swell? I mean, the waves, the wave heights that we saw, um, you know, it was larger than, uh, you know, most of any of our swells that we've seen. And also, you know, the coastal inundation that we've seen, the impacts, um, that created a lot of issues, um, you know, road closures, you know, condos got damaged. So that's what made it so historic. Yeah, we saw these crazy videos of the, of the wedding being crashed in, uh, on the Kona Coast. That wasn't even the southern shore. And then the, the, the condominium that, the, I mean, it went over the condominium. So, so what, what basic, at the very basic, what causes swells? So, so wind creates swell, um, you know, the longer, you know, the stronger the winds and the longer it blows and the greater area that it covers, um, that creates these huge swells. So, uh, you know, we're known for the, the North Shore surf, right? You, of all people, know you're a big time surfer. What, I mean, so why is it so rare to get a, a southern swell that was so big? Um, so basically, the south swells, they travel over 4,000 miles to get here. And versus, you know, some of the large north swells, um, you know, for like the eddy events, you know, they travel, you know, 1,000 miles, um, you know, or, you know, 1,000 to 2,000 miles. So they're much less distance, so there's less decay in the swell. Uh, so it just kind of loses its punch, loses its energy, because it's got to come all the way from the, the southern hemisphere, right? So these storms. Was there a big storm in the southern hemisphere and, and there created a lot of wind that, that prompted or at least started the southern swell? Yeah, I mean, this was, you know, a very strong storm system that created this swell and it traveled over 4,000 miles to get here, so. Now, I, this, the term historic, they keep saying it's a historic swell. So I heard 26 feet. Uh, I heard, uh, you know, haven't seen this in decades. Do you have any, like, I, you might not have the actual numbers, but was there a number while this was in such and such a year? Um, so, yeah, um, looking at, uh, you know, Pat Caldwell's database, um, you know, the, the list that the storm the wave heights that top the list is from 1995, um, June 13th of 1995. So that was the last time we've seen waves this big. Like in the mid 20s, right? That high. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So I guess it was. Who knows uh, about before the Pat Caldwell? He's he's the big, he's the surf guru, right? Yeah, he's yeah. Retired, right? I think. Yeah, he's retired. Yeah, but he has a great database, and that we look into to see, you know, how historic this swell was. And, you know, compared to 1995, the buoy observations were actually a little larger with this swell than the 1995 swell, so. Yeah, oh, wow. So, I mean, we get a lot more information these days now. We got some uh, stuff to measure. Well, well, thanks, Genki. I really appreciate you uh, coming in uh, to visit us and waking up this early. So, uh, thanks, Genki. He's uh, working at the weather service there. He's an expert on the surf, and he's a big surfer. This is the, the Japan longboard champion, right? What year was that? <laughs> Uh, that was like 2013, back 2000? in the day. <laughs> it was like it was yesterday, Genki. <laughs>